Hi, I'm Chris from Air Windows, and hey, you can do this. this is whole now you may ask what's a whole well I'll tell you as always I'm working on new ways of doing sound processing this one was a suggestions from uh, I think it was Bo uh, one of my chat folks on Mondays I was going to set up to do a new version of my tape delay plugin and I still mean to do that in fact I think I can do an even more interesting version of it but for the second time Bo has suggested here let me take this reverb away Bo has suggested a filtering plugin based on stuff stock market folks do and that's what Hull is like it's not the first one for instance I can open up another plugin which is let's see now Holt and Holt is another plugin where we can stuff to the audio and this was based off of somebody's notion of how to do weird things with stock market prediction. Now, one of the things about this is people go to great lengths to come up with algorithms and figure out ways that they can go, oh, look at all this noisy data, but if I filter it, we can know what's going to happen. This is not true. There's a lot more randomness than those folks would like to believe and although you can isolate like trends and trajectories and things like that this is creative sound processing in effect they're just applying it to uh would-be real world behavior so uh don't try to pick stocks based on uh your logic project uh it might be not a good idea but by the same token it's perfectly fine as a audio processor where you can take the uh, high frequencies off or take the low frequencies off in an interesting and characteristic way. Now the deal with this is Hull is basically just a guy's way of combining a bunch of different averages. Well, I've done averages before and it seemed like a good time to dive into that again. In fact, to dive into it in a way where I could undersample it so it ran the same at high sample rates. And I just went beyond that a little bit. You can't necessarily see what the CPU meter is doing, but I've got this set up so that we can average in a very primitive way that allows for manipulation of the control more easily. Lots of samples. So this is kind of one of your chainsaw effects. Um, I may, may actually be able to, uh, here, here, see up here where we have a CPU meter and where we can still see it. Observe the behavior on this very powerful iMac as I see up here I wish I had a larger one but check this out I can crank it all the way up this is maybe not a good effect for working on uh, bass filtering but one of the interesting things about it is that we can actually do that. Like I have this nasty kick, if I roll it off using hull,
we can get it very deep. And of course, since we're using a bright control, this is effectively a dry wet that's inverted and multiplied and combined. So what you're getting with bright at minus one is the raw output of this algorithm. In the middle, we've got a uh, dry signal. And then as you turn it all the way to the other side, you get the opposite. You get dry signal minus the filtered signal. So you get high pass. And the interesting thing about that is to work out how this rather unusual algorithm manages to adapt itself to audio sounds. Like I can, I can do the roll off part, bright, negative bright. And it has an interesting characteristic sound to it. Where you got a real, a lot of sort of extra edge going on there. If we, if we use it as a high pass rather than a low pass, it's definitely filtering out the lows, perhaps quite a lot. It's a fairly steep filter, but this isn't acting like just your regular biquad or whatever. This is a weird filter with some distinctive tonal qualities going on. And I can also throw in some high frequency sounds of various kinds. And what I noticed is if we use this as a low pass, the whole point of this design was to um, wipe out high frequency information while retaining as much as possible of the apparent underlying trajectory. So the person who did this, they wanted to wipe out all the noise, but keep all the corners and what seemed to be information. Of course, that's not really true. That is a illusion, but this illusion as applied to audio sounds means that we get this really interesting coloration. I feel there is an extra kind of vibe and energy to this particular roll off. It's a little dirty. It's a little kind of edgy and grindy. And while that might not necessarily be useful for stock market prediction purposes, although who thinks it is, it sure is interesting for audio. And we can apply it by doing a lot of filtering like this to get a very distinctive sound. Or we can apply it uh, very cheaply. This is not a CPU expensive plugin at the really high frequency settings. And we get something that is maybe a little bit reminiscent of the old school sampling that I'm going to be working on modeling. So, we can darken stuff in a way that is maybe characteristic. We've got a certain amount of range of adjustment here. This is Fulbright, and then that's not totally unlike kind of old school sampler vibe. There is a energy and punch to the highs. Here, let's turn up some of these highs again. And doing this, we can get a 
this sort of darker, vibey quality about it, which uh, the raw sounds like that. But much like if you run into a really old school sampler, just the sort that I'm talking about doing models of, you can take the extreme brightness out of those highs. And get something that sits in the mix. So this is another one of your building block plugins. Hole is a experiment that is not necessarily any specific thing, but it's this guy's interpretation of how to like add different kinds of averages together. And it has useful qualities to it. And of course, If we were going to take out everything except for maybe this raunchy, uh, bright arpeggio. Here it is doing its thing. Very distorted. We can give a kind of guitar sound to it. And it's got that overtone to it. And now my voice sounds like I'm going through a guitar amp as well. And I should probably be able to use that same principle to get a characteristic kind of punchy, vibey, distorty sound for things like guitar amp sims and stuff. So there's a lot of possibilities for what we can do with this. I'll, I'll mention another one. This is what Mr. Hole came up with as far as combining different averages together. It's his notion of this is the correct way to do this. But what it really is, is three different averages, one of which is nested inside another. And it doesn't have to be the specific arrangement or ratios that he used. I could just as well go, let's do the uh, here, let's dial it in the other way. I'm using it as bright on one, so it's sort of full high passing. And this is at the highest frequencies it can reach. And then I can flip it over to be the low pass. And the deal is if I'm trying to dial in something like this is similar to like my old emu sampler or whatever it is that I'm trying to model, I can go into this and start fiddling with the ratios of the various averages against each other. And in so doing, what I can do is try to dial in what sounds most like my target sound, rather than just what is most like what the guy that invented Hall meant to do. And again, you can hear that's uh, a really punchy, crunchy low end coming out of there because it's accentuating some of the mid ranges just where they're most needed for impact. Check out that kick. And we can also use it as a high pass. And just for the moment, I'm going to crank up the CPU insanely. It's now set to a very low frequency. Although this is not an efficient use of the algorithm, 
if it comes in handy, you can still do this. You can still apply it this way. Or using the dry wet, which is labeled bright. Dial in as much of it as you want. And there you have it, really. So Hull is a open source, free to use plugin for audio unit and VST. Audio unit exists both as a retro version, which goes all the way back to PPC machines, and a signed version, which is for use on M1 uh, modern Macintoshes and anything that uses code signing like, you know, Big Sur, Catalina, so on and so forth. Same with the VSTs, and the VSTs also exist for Windows in 32 and 64-bit and Linux. So all this is supported by my Patreon. And as you can see, I have the ability to build new cool things and so on. I'm, I've been putting a lot of work into stuff like um, inventing a game for composing arrangement concepts for music and so on. So I keep very busy on top of the plugins that I do. If that seems like a lot of work, well, it is, but this is the kind of stuff I like. And I'm going to push forward with that as much as I can. Uh, hang on, let me make Hull behave itself again. So essentially, I'm going to keep charging away on this kind of stuff. And I am collecting up, I think at the moment, uh, probably by next month, I'm going to be about... Uh, $320 towards acquiring a full-on uh, EMU SP1200. That is what superfluous money, more than I actually need to live, goes towards now with the Patreon. So if you want to see my work of modeling and emulating this stuff and developing all these things expand further, well, you know what to do. If you don't, or if you're having a hard month or something and can't do it, I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Throwing money at me just makes some things happen faster. That's all. Um, if you want more people to see my videos, well, you know what to do. I don't think I have to tell you that. And I'll be back on Monday doing a live stream. I think this time I am going to try to do the... Uh, tape delay, because I have some ideas for how I could do a better tape delay effect. The old tape delay will still exist. You'll still be able to use it, but there'll be a tape delay too. And it'll be a little more modern. I will have uh, more interesting things you can do with it along the same basic lines. This has been fun, but I need to get towards my tacos and posting this video. So I will talk to you folks later. And thank you very much for tuning in. I may be doing more videos as I get my stuff together. As you can see, the studio has been growing and developing a little bit. And my hope is that I can get into some new music as well, rather than using the same thing over and over. The, the workload that I've got kind of gets in the way of being able to make any music myself, as you probably well know if you've been following these. But... Uh, I've been putting a lot of work into the sort of backstory of how I would go about doing more of that. And we'll see. We'll see how that develops. In any case, I'll see some of you folks on Monday, and I hope you like Hull. Hull is, again, another building block that I'll be using the algorithms in future work, but you can use it right now to do your high-pass or low-pass filtering be careful about turning the frequency control up too much because it'll start eating all of your CPU. I didn't really put in much of a limit on it. It'll just kind of go crazy, especially at higher sample rates. It might blow up real good. But uh, on that note, talk to you later. Bye-bye.